church please let's welcome one another to god's glorious presence it's good to see you in church this evening hallelujah hallelujah shall we just bow our heads and appreciate the lord for the privilege of his word let's appreciate the lord father we give you praise God, the one whom we have, the one whom we serve, the author of scripture, we return all the glory unto you for your word. We thank you for you sent forth your word and your word healed us. Thank you for the performance of your counsel today. As I yield myself and I pray for grace to rightly divide your word, grant me speed, grant me strength, anoint your word on my lips, and it accomplish your purpose in the name of Jesus. Pray for every heart. Daddy, you will minister to us by yourself. The Holy Spirit will make your presence pronounced and good in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, you will bless us richly. We will go home rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise God. Please turn your scriptures with me to the book of Psalm, Psalm 46. I will read the first five verses. Uh, we, we are going to be reading some portion of scriptures today. Uh, and I want to ask the, uh, uh, the media group to help me. Hallelujah. So that we can finish. I have so much to share with us tonight. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the heart be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its water roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her just at the break of dawn hallelujah this evening by God's grace I want to quickly share on that very first verse of what we have read a very present help a very present help Tonight, I came to 
bring a word of encouragement, a word of hope, and a word of comfort. That whatever the unpleasant challenges and situations you are going through, there is someone that wants to help you. Are you in trouble? Like the song we heard, are you sinking very fast? And it looks like there is no help in sight. I want to submit to you that God wants to help you. He's ever ready to help you. And the truth of the matter is he will help you. Please let me tell your neighbor the Lord will help you. You know, sometimes we create problems for ourselves. Abby. And after we created that problem, and uh, we can't help ourselves, the next thing we look up unto God to help us. Either some circumstances of life can even play a fast one on us. We didn't bargain for it, and one thing just led to the other, and we find ourselves in trouble. Either it is by ignorance, or it's a self-inflicted trouble. The truth of the matter, which is the summation I came with tonight, is that God will help you. He will sort your case out. Uh, the truth of the matter is, this, your own you know, is not going to be the first time. And your own will not be the last. It's an eternal God, and that is his business. And that is what he wants to do for his people. The truth of the matter is, as I said, God we help you and the lord will help you in jesus name now the devil can play fast one on us as we are waiting on god he will introduce distractions to us he will introduce anxiety to us he will introduce worry to us he will introduce doubt to us so that we will not enjoy the plan of god so that we will not enjoy the blessing that god has in his mind no wonder Philippians chapter 4, let's project it, verse 6. Through the Spirit, God was telling his church, he says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. He said, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpass all understanding, we guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Look at verse 6. He said, be anxious for nothing. So that thing that you are anxious about is actually nothing. Doesn't cost God a seconds. Did I say seconds? A, a pico seconds to turn your situations around. Everyone will lose nothing if he helps you. So he's saying to you, in that situation, circumstances of life that you are going through, be anxious for nothing. He has taken care of it. Jesus spent an extended time to share some wonderful things with us about worry. Matthew chapter 6, uh, 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 Matthew chapter 6, yes, from verse 26. Let's read Matthew chapter 6, 26. Okay, let's go back to 25. Thank you. See, look at it. It says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Wow. So I should not worry about my life. I should not worry. He said, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. He said, it's not life more than food and body more than clothing. And yet he said, do not worry about your life. Because as far as he's concerned, he has said to your life, even before you were brought forth, he had packaged wonderful things for you. Hallelujah. He said, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barn. He said, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? He now gave you a challenge. He said, which of you, by worry, can add one cubic to his statue? Is it possible? That you just wanted to grow taller and say, let me add a cubic. Is it possible? He said, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the least of the feet. How they grow, they need a toy in Spain. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all this glory was not a real like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the feet which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little feet? Therefore, and I said, do not worry. Let me tell your neighbor, no worry. 
don't worry. You know, when we were young, there is a, 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 an artist. I don't know if he's alive now. We call him Why Worry. You know, maybe he's village headmaster or whatever. He said, Why Worry? He said, When lion come, don't worry. Hallelujah. How many of us we see lion and won't worry? We are still going back to that verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you see a lion coming one way, the next thing, your senses will tell you that you should pick race very fast. But do you know that some people have mastered the heart of taming the lion? Was it this week or last week? I saw a, a, a lady with a, with a stick leading three pack, packs of, uh, of lion, leading them. I saw it on the Facebook. I said, wow. Let's go back. He said, what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Verse 32. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. And this one blew my fuse. He said, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Wow. And that's the reason why we don't have to worry. We are not a liability in the hands of God. We are his son. And he's a responsible father. He will take care of us. And he said, we should seek first the kingdom of God. So all that we should worry about is how the kingdom of God will increase in righteousness. And he said, all these things will be added to us. The last verse said, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. He said, do not worry about what? About tomorrow. He said, I don't know what tomorrow will bring. It's not your business. He said, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You don't have to worry about what you are going to put on. You don't have to worry about trouble that comes your way because you are his son. You are his son. And he will take care of you. He will sort your case out. The Lord that you serve will sort you out. That was what that king told Daniel. The Lord that you serve continually will deliver you from the ends of or from the paw of the lion. And today we can testify that that same God delivered Daniel. And that same God will deliver you out of any whatever unpleasant situation you may find yourself in. And I said, do not doubt. Don't doubt also. Don't doubt the power of God. Don't doubt the ability of God to bless your life. The truth of the matter is, if you don't doubt, God will help you speedily and quickly. The reason why it seems that the help of God is being delayed from reaching us is because we are in between two opinions. Will it do it? What if it tarries? What if God didn't do it the time that I would prefer he do it? We worry about so many things. But the truth of the matter is God that we serve is a very present help in trouble. So if you don't doubt, the help of God will reach you speedily. There was a story, Jairus. He came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a centurion. And um, the Bible says he bowed to worship the Lord. And he told Jesus, my daughter, the only one, is sick unto death, is dying. Come, that was the level of his feet. Jesus, come home and heal my daughter. And Jesus said, let's go. And a crowd of people followed the Lord Jesus Christ to see another miracle as usual. And the crowd thronged him. The speed must have been very slow. And, and Jairus must have looked at Jesus and said, Master, you are taking time. Let's move fast. Because he had never seen dead being raised back to life. As they were moving to this house, the woman with the issue of blood actually stopped the Lord Jesus Christ. Because after she touched the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ, the issue stopped. And the Bible says Jesus himself stopped because he perceived that power has gone out of his body. He said, who touched me? That was another delay. Maybe you have been suffering, delay. You have tried this, delayed. Tried that, delayed. Get ready. God will visit you and sort your case out in Jesus' name. And as he settled the issue, I mean, with the issue of blood woman, there was a report from the house of Jairus. Don't trouble the master again. The child has gone. 
You can imagine if you had such a thing, the emotion will play. The next thing you want to do to put your hands on your head and cry and say, Ah, be able to suffer you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Don't be afraid. Only believe. That sorts it out. So instead of you to be afraid of that circumstances or that unpleasant situation that you find yourself in, don't. Only believe God's word. Only believe God's word. At the end of the day, Jesus raised that daughter. And the Lord God will visit you and change your life and change your situation in the name of Jesus. James chapter 1 from verse 5. James chapter 1 from verse 5. We're going to read it down. Hallelujah. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. And I said, let him ask in faith with no doubting. Why? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He should not even enter his imagination that he will receive a dime. Because he's doubting the ability and the power of God to work effectively in him. He said, he's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And when you're unstable in all your ways, what happened? No excelling. That was the cause. God, I mean, Jacob placed upon Reuben. He said, unstable as water, you will not excel. He said, let no that man think that he will receive anything. Anything, no matter how little it is. Because you doubted his ability to work effectively in you. So let's get rid of doubt. Because he's ever ready to help us. Several ready to help. And he wants to navigate your life so that you can enjoy the help, the lifting, the blessing that he had in mind. That he had in mind. How is, is he going to do it? You know, we ask ourselves, how? Okay, we know when. How? I mean, we know why. How will he help me? Number one, he will use his word. He sent forth his word and his word healer us and his word deliver us from our troubles. The word is very powerful. No wonder the Bible said the word is active and it is living, sharper than two-edged sword. Have you ever touched a two-edged sword before? Have you ever touched the face of it? How many of us have touched it? And now, when you touch it, what happened to you? Ah, even knife, ordinary knife, if it is very sharp, one day I went to sharpen a knife. I know the knife was very hot, but I thought it would be cold. By the time I touched it, I quickly removed my hand. The thing, <laughs> you can now imagine a double-edged sword that is as sharp as anything. And the Bible says God's word is sharper. God's word is sharper. We don't have to joke with God's word. Jesus said they are spirit and their life. Ha! Sometimes some of us will rationalize God's word. Oh, he's talking about the old Jews. Oh, he's talking about the privileged ones. No, the word of God is for you. It's for you. So we need to believe it. We need to apply God's word into our life. If we want to see the glory of the Lord in our lives. Luke chapter 7. A centurion came to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he didn't even come. He sent some people. Elders of Israel. My servant is dying. Come and, I mean, just appeal to and when these guys came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, he built our synagogue. He's a good man. I mean, and Jesus said, okay, let's go to heal his dying servant. Very close to the house, the man sent another message. He said, you don't need to come. I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Verse 7. He said, give the word. Therefore, I did not think myself worthy to come to you. He said, but say the word. Say the word. That was the most important thing in, in, in our lives. The word is the most important thing. If you remove the word from our life, we are nothing. We, are, we cannot function. We are nothing. That's why we must not joke with God's word. We must treasure it above our daily bread. It's our life. Without it, we can't breathe. We can't, we can't function. We can't enjoy any benefits that God had in mind for our lives. The word of the Lord is powerful. So the word, he will use the instrumentality of his word 
One, he said, God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoken it, will he not make it good? What is it that I have spoken to you? He will bring it to pass. He told us that it's our year of settlement. Wow. And it's after we have suffered a while. It will say to us. So have you suffered a while? Hallelujah. If you have suffered a while, get ready for your settlement. Because not the judge, not the teacher of his word will go without being fulfilled. He said he watches over his word to perform it. Ah, is it possible for you to watch over your word? One day I was talking to some people. I said, why is it that telling you about sorrow? I say, in tell To repay in your knee. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a man that will say a word and authority will not back it up. Not Jesus. When he told his disciples, by two by two, go. He gave them authority. They returned back and said, even demons were subject to us and they were glad. Authority follow his word. Once he's spoken his word, it's not returning to him void. It's what we accomplish the desires of his heart, his purpose. That's the reason why we need to treasure his word. And enjoy it. Number two, it will use the ministry of the Holy Spirit to help us. Those are the two things that I discovered. John chapter 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. John chapter 14, 16 and 17. It says, And I will pray the Father. It was on the service of the church, and he said, I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. So you have the resources inside of you that you cannot exhaust. You can't exhaust the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he sees him not, nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Emphasis all. He said, the Holy Spirit didn't know biology. Who told you? Holy Spirit didn't know chemistry. Who told you? Are you struggling? You don't know it? Then you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. It's called student of knowledge. When we were small, one we say is Mr. No Hall. Daily times. Mr. No Hall. And when we ask him a question, he will quickly go, you've got, because we will not be there, when he will give us, <laughs> he will just give us the answers. Ah, this man really know things. So, mm, we will not search money. Not the Holy Spirit. As you are asking the question, he's giving you the solution. He's giving you the solution. It's because some of us, we, let me use a hard word, we are dull of hearing. That is why we find ourselves at the crossroad, not knowing what to do. If we follow the Holy Spirit squarely, we will always have, <coughs> have knowledge of what to do by time. Because we are going to be led. It's as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. Wow. Our weaknesses. Even at the place of prayer. Some of us will find prayer so hard and difficult. No, we shouldn't be. If the Holy Spirit is right inside of us, we're supposed to enjoy the place of prayer. Because it helps our infirmities. But we do not know how to pray or what to pray about. But the Holy Spirit pray with groanings that what cannot alter. Praise with, I mean, praise with groanings. Hallelujah. So, dependence on the Holy Spirit is very, very crucial and important. Most especially those of us in Nigeria. Those of us in this side of uh, the world who you got to depend so much on God's word and on the Holy Spirit to navigate life. To navigate life and to come out strong and to come out beautiful. You got to trust the Holy Spirit. You got to trust the Holy Spirit. So when is he going to help us? When you are ready for him. He's a very present help. To some of us, he's going to tell us that we should wait. That he will sort it out for us. Waiting is not easy. Oh. You understand what I'm saying now? Waiting is not easy. But the truth of the matter is, there is nobody that waited for him and were put to shame. There's nobody that waited for him that were put to shame. So to some of us, we have to wait. To some of us, as we are saying it from our mouth, the solution will come. It was like Abraham's servant. He was asking God for help. He was given a very difficult task. Go choose a wife for Isaac, my son. 
You can imagine the father didn't even bother. Go to my kindred, choose a and when the man got to a particular well and he was saying, God of my, fa- my sa- uh, uh, master, help me, direct me, as he was saying it, what happened? Rebecca came in. Solution. And solution will be, you know, will be wrapped up in opportunities, in a coat of opportunities. Now, they, I mean, we are now up to discover and know what to do about that solution. Hallelujah. So he's ever ready to help us. He said he's a very present help in times of trouble. Are you in trouble? He's a very present help in times of trouble. The question that should be, ha- be in your heart is, what is it that I want him to do for me? That is the thing. And the story in Mark chapter 10 from verse 46, the story of blind Batibius. The man was blind. He was begging by the wayside. And a large crowd entered the city of Jericho for the very last time. Jesus was passing. A miracle was about to, I'm not done. <laughs> a miracle was about to happen. And uh, the man must have grabbed one, I mean someone, because one must have grabbed him. What is going on here? Jesus, of, Jesus came. Of na- and he shouted, have mercy. And Jesus talked. He said, bring him. And he came. And the question Jesus asked him, Jesus saw that he was blind, but he said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you, what do you want me to do for you? So the first thing is identify what you want from the hands of God. Identify it. Jesus could have looked at him and said, maybe he needs change. Beat, yeah, Judas is carried Come and give him money. And that will have solved his problem. Uh, to some of us, we still don't know what we should ask God for. Now, some of us are asking God to bless our bread and our water, which has already been covered. Abi, we read it in Matthew chapter 6 now. It has already been covered. Have you ever talked about the kingdom of God with God? Have we ever talked about his concern? Have we ever advancement of the kingdom of God in Nigeria with God? Have you ever talked about the advancement of the kingdom of God in Vine Branch? Have you ever talked to God about it? Have you ever talked to God about it? So we want to, you know, I, 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 have, I have done it before, you understand? And uh, you are going home and you say, Shamawari, you know, Levi. And you are saying, Lord, eh, give us this light. Eh? By the time you are just wasting time praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the time you get this, Allah. There are some people that will just say, What kind of prayer are you praying? Some kind of, there are better things to spend time on. So we need to relax and sit down and identify. Where we want the Lord to intervene in our lives. Is it about challenges in your workplace? Is it about a wayward child? Is it about your health? Is it about your finances? Is it about your way of life? Is it about the nation? Is it about the kingdom of God? We need to first and foremost identify it. The second, we need to ask in faith. Jesus asked the man, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, that I may see. That I may see. He knew what he wanted and he asked with faith in his heart. One thing I've noticed in scriptures, I've never seen the Lord in glory faith in action. I stand to be corrected. If you have read through the scriptures, I have seen God ignoring faith and action. Maybe I will change my theology. I've never seen him ignoring faith and action. If we will put our faith to action, we will see the glory of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, 
it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So God is a rewarder of faith. We always say that God is a rewarder of labor, Abby, but it's a rewarder of faith also. It's a rewarder of faith. If your faith is strong, if your faith is in him, the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, he will reward your faith. He will reward it. So are you asking him faith or you are still doubting? What if? Remove the word what if from your life and you will see speedily the glory of the Lord. You will see his hand straight forth to minister to you. You will see it speedily. You will see it quickly. So ask in faith without doubting. And you will see the glory of God. Trust him with all of your heart. He said, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? Anytime I'm going through challenges, I always say, to, to whom shall we go? Uh, to fall like David. Let me go fall into your hands <laughs> than to fall into the other hands. It's better to fall into God's hands because it's merciful. So entrust your life into his hands. And you will see wonders. You will see. Second, second Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. Yes, second Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. Let's see it. Second Samuel 22, verse 31. Hallelujah. Second Samuel. It says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a sheep. To all who trust in him. A sheet. You know the function of a sheet? No matter how strong the dark arrow of the enemy may be, it cannot penetrate a shining sheet. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I will be your sheet. I will preserve you. I will protect you. I will guide you. I will even deliver you. So your own is to say, Lord, I entrust my life totally, completely to your hands. If you meant it, it will carry you on eagle's wing and it will see you through it will see you through psalm 44 i think verse 6 psalm 44 and i think verse 6 psalm 44 and verse 6 hallelujah psalm 44 hallelujah he said i will not trust in my bow nor shall my sword he said i'm not going to trust my skill wow it was the psalmist that wrote this. The man of war. So I'm not going to trust my bow. My sword will not save me. But I will trust in the living God. Who saves even unto the uttermost. So stop trusting your skills. Skills with feelings. Sometimes. Stop trusting your connection. Connection with feelings. Sometimes. Ah, you should have come yesterday. Ah, what's up with you? Who don't they two mean here? Who don't they two mean here? But if you put your trust in God, if you put your trust in the arm of flesh, the arm of flesh will fail you woefully. But if you put your trust in the living God, that is a guarantee of success for you. That is a guarantee of you returning with sheaves of joy. Lastly, wait patiently for him. Wait patiently. Patiently. Is that the peace of God that passes all understanding? Let that peace control you. Let it stabilize you. So instead of you to fret and move up and down, let that peace say to you, we do ourselves a lot of harm when we want to help God to sort out an issue. We do ourselves a lot of harm. So enter into rest. Enter into peace. Because you know that God will sort it out. He said, even when it tarry, he said, wait for it. It will not tarry. It will come speedily. But as you wait, enter rest it's like you know the end from the beginning hallelujah because you carry the DNA of God hallelujah so when challenges of life come when trouble of life come when situation that you cannot handle come enter rest because you know the end of it Abi, you know the end of it now it's going to be peace for you it's going to be peace for you it's going to be celebration for you and some of us we, have, we sometimes forget that so we'll move from one pillar to post looking for solution. At the end of the day, the thing will meet us and we are, we are used up. And sometimes some of us will think it's by our strength that those things came. Ah, um, you gone. We think it's by our connection. Because we have labored 
we have not helped God to actually do what he said he would do concerning us. But when you enter peace, Jesus told us, uh, John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, in the world you will have trouble. He said, be of good cheer. Have overcome the world for you. That should sustain us when we are faced with issues of life. It should sustain us that God, you have overcome the world. I enter into rest. I enter into peace. Yes, a lot of things may be happening. A lot of intimidations. A lot of... But I enter into rest. And said, like a pastor, he said, Can you come with this shelly? Enter into rest. Be still and know I am God. Psalm 46, as I close tonight, and verse 10. Psalm 46 and verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. He said, I will be exalted among the nation. I will be exalted in the heart. So in whatever situation that you are going through, God is saying, I will be exalted. I will be exalted. So I don't know what is ailing you. I may not have the idea of how tough the situations may be. The challenges of life that you are going through. Or how long you have been waiting? How long you have been waiting? A man by Bethesda waited for a very long time. But one day, help came to him. Today may be your own, own one day that help from above will locate you and turn your life around. If only you can look up to him the heart of your life, the one that packages you, the one that said, I will help you, and you will glorify him. What is it that is healing you? Are you passing through the valley of the shadow of death? Is it issue of life and death? And you don't know what to do. You can turn it over to him, the one that knows the hand from the beginning. You can turn it over to him and say, Lord, have your way in this issue. And I'm very sure that you will return with the joy of the Lord. Let's bow our head. I appreciate the Lord. I, I know my time is gone, but we still need to pray. Bow your head and say, Lord, I'm grateful for the privilege of your word. Grateful for what you have in mind for my life grateful for your heart of love grateful because you are a good father grateful because you are interested in my life grateful because you are interested in my kids i return all the glory unto you i bless your name i believe we have identified where we need him tonight i want us to bring it to him in prayer he said what do you want me to do for you Let's bring it to him in prayer. Even the whispers of our heart, he hears them. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. He's able to answer our thoughts. Please ask him tonight. Place a demand on his word tonight. Place a demand on his word tonight. And you will see God's glory. What do you want him to do for you? He's the only one that can step into that issue. Yes, there's nobody that can help you. It's because he will share his glory with no man. Bring it before him. Bring it before him in faith. Ask him faith. Ask him faith tonight. Ask him to step into the issue. You may have tarried long on that mountain. But it's time to break camp. It's time to move forward. Because God is going to lead you in the way you are to go. He's going to help you. He's going to help you. Maybe your own is a burden. You are burden up about one issue or the other. Just drop it at the feet of the master. You can't do anything about it. That's the reason why it's a burden to you. But if you can drop it at the feet of the master, he will sort it out. Maybe your wood is a long-standing issue. Say, I, I, I understand. 
but there is God in heaven who understands all things and who can do all things and who want to do all things for you just drop it at the feet of the master ask him to help you ask him to help you oh to some of us maybe it's a dead end issue say we have closed the chapter we have closed the case there's nothing we can do about it that woman her only son was dead the woman of nine and she followed the bear of her only son and jesus intervened that same jesus is in the house we want to intervene in those dead end issues if you will bring it to him in prayer if you will bring it to him in prayer Everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All I've been to bear. Please help me, Susan. What a privilege to carry. Greetings to God in prayer. Oh, what need is Oh, what need is we bear? everything to him in prayer tonight i'm giving us time to pray carry everything everything because he said be anxious for nothing carry everything to him in prayer carry everything to him in prayer he, he listens to us because he loves us he wants to do mighty things in our lives is a long standing issue you have been waiting on the Lord bring it before him in prayer bring it before him in prayer maybe your own is sickness you have been managing it and it seems the sickness didn't want to go bring it before him as we pray together in faith father we appreciate you thank you because you always hear us we have confidence in you because you are God answers prayer we bring needs expectations desires lack trouble before you Lord that in your mercy you will intervene and sort them out in the name of Jesus you say many are the afflictions of the righteous Said the Lord delivers him from them all. You are our deliverer to deal with lay claim upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask for deliverance and help and solution to come speedily to every need expressed tonight 
in the name of Jesus. Moses told the, the, the Israelites, said, the Egyptians you see today, you see them no more. Stand and declare the Egyptians you see today, you will not see them again in your life. Every wood of delay is broken. From now progress for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every wood of sickness is destroyed over your life. He says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? You are our God, Jehovah of God, the Lord that healed us. We invoke your covenant name upon your history tonight. That the power of God will search out and bring healings and bring deliverance and bring help and support to your church in the name of the Lord Jesus. As many that are saying, Lord, we don't know what to do. We receive instructions in righteousness. We receive an understanding heart. We receive grace to surge ahead in the name of the Lord Jesus. As many that are saying, it's a dead end. We have closed the case. Daddy, you will visit that case and turn it around. In the name of Jesus, we we'll pray for the supernatural manifestations of your power upon every year at this evening in the name of jesus let every issues be sorted out let jesus alone be glorified in the name of jesus let there be joy and celebration in the name of the lord jesus we pray oh god that we will return with our ships of joy to your glory we will celebrate your faithfulness in the name of jesus father we thank you for your intervention Thank you for what you have done and thank you for what you will do. We return all the glory unto you for you will show us great and mighty things that we don't know. You will minister to us by yourself and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you for the standing issue. We will be sorted out. It will end in joy in the praises of the Most High God in the name of the Lord Jesus. We return all the glory unto you. We we'll celebrate your faithfulness. I appreciate him tonight in the name of Jesus.